Welcome yet again to our pregnancy and labor videos. I hope you watched our last video where we spoke about natural ways to induce labor. But sometimes things don't work out the natural way and you need the medical help to induce labor. So hello everyone, I'm Dr. Anjali Kumar. I once again bring greetings to you from Maitri. Maitri is a space where we talk anything and everything about women's health. So if you are nearing your due date or have specific medical reasons to induce labor, this video will provide you with important information about what to expect in the hospital when the doctor has planned the induction of labor for you. So what is labor induction? So labor induction is a process of stimulating the uterus to become contractions before the natural labor starts. Now medical induction may be recommended for various reasons. Number one, post-dated or post-term pregnancies. Various institutes may induce labor anytime between 40 to 42 weeks depending upon maternal and baby's health. Second, premature rupture of membranes which means that your water bag has ruptured but the pains have not yet started. Number three, gestational diabetes or hypertension. In such cases, the doctors like to plan the delivery between 37 to 38 weeks. Then intrauterine growth restriction, which means that the baby is not growing well inside. So in this, the doctor plans a delivery so that this baby will do better outside because this baby will get things better outside than being inside. Another reason for induction of labor could be decreased amniotic fluid. Now, once again, decreased amniotic fluid is a sign that the baby is not getting good blood supply inside. Another reason could be intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. So many of you could be experiencing a lot of itching in pregnancy and many times this itching could be because of pregnancy condition which is known as cholestasis of pregnancy. Once again, the doctor would like to plan the uh, delivery by about 37 weeks of pregnancy. Now let's understand first what is cervical ripening or for that matter what is cervix. So the first step in many induction processes is cervical ripening. Now this is when the cervix softens and thins to prepare for labor. So let's first understand what is cervix. So cervix is the mouth of uterus. So in this let's understand this whole thing is the uterus. This is the cervix which is closed. That's the baby inside. It is connected to the placenta by the cord. This is the vagina. This is somewhere the outside vaginal opening which you see. So there are two things which must happen in the cervix for this baby to come out. The cervix must open and the cervix must become thin. Now you watch this. Now here the cervix is thinning up. It is almost becoming part of the uterus and also this has started dilating. And here the cervix has almost become part of the uterus and it is fully dilated. Membrane sweeping. So we also spoke about this procedure when we were talking about the natural ways to induce labor. Now this is also known as membrane stripping. It's a procedure where the doctor gently separates the amniotic sac from the uterine wall using a gloved finger. So let's understand this. This dotted thing is the amniotic sac. So there is fluid in this and the baby is floating in this. Now the doctor puts her finger inside like this and gently separates this amniotic sac from the uterus. Now this process releases certain hormones which are known as prostaglandins and this can stimulate the 
labor. Now, this method can cause sometimes a little discomfort and cramping, and it can be done during a regular prenatal visit when the cervix has started to dilate a little bit. This process may not start labor immediately, but it can actually move things faster within a few days. Sometimes this may also be done in the hospital after the cervix has softened and started dilating after the prostaglandin use. Artificial rupture of membranes. This is also known as amniotomy. Now, as the name suggests, this means that we are artificially rupturing the membranes of water bag. So you can see this dotted thing is the water bag in which the baby is floating inside. So, uh, artificial rupture of membranes involves breaking this water bag surrounding the baby by using a small sterile instrument which is known as amnio hook. Now, this procedure is usually done when the cervix is partially dilated and partially effaced like in this picture. Breaking the water can increase the pressure of the baby's head now on the cervix which can expedite the labor progress. It is also important to note that once the water is broken, now the baby is open to the outside world. There is higher risk of infection ascending up from the vagina to the baby. So the labor now needs to proceed very efficiently and we need to expedite the labor fast. Now this method also helps the doctor to see if the amniotic fluid is clear and there is no meconium which means that the baby has not pooped inside. So obviously when we rupture it then the water comes out and then we can actually see the color of the water. Balloon catheters. Now, balloon catheter is also another tool which is used for cervical ripening. So here, a small balloon is inserted inside the cervix and it is then inflated with saline. So imagine this balloon is going here and when we inflate, it actually separates the amniotic sac from the uterine wall. So the pressure from the balloon also helps the cervix to dilate. This method is often used when the cervix needs an additional assistance to open up when it is not opening in a normal way. Now the balloon typically stays uh, in that place for about 12 hours or until it falls out when the cervix starts to dilate on its own. So for cervical ripening, we use medications called prostaglandins. Now they can be inserted as a gel or a tablet inserted into the vagina. Now prostaglandins mimic the natural hormones your body produces to start the labor. They work by softening and thinning the cervix, making it easier for it to dilate and later start the uterine contractions. Now the process can take several hours, sometimes multiple doses are needed. So your doctor will monitor you and your baby throughout this process to ensure that it is working effectively and the mother and the baby are safe. So during this process, the mother is usually mobile, may have an IV line and the baby's heartbeat is continuously monitored uh, by a machine called CTG machine. Then oxytocin administration. So one of the most common medical methods to induce labor is the administration of oxytocin. It is also commonly known as pitocin or syntocinone. So oxytocin is a hormone that is you know, naturally produced in the body and it stimulates uterine contractions. When it is used for induction, it is given through the IV line and the dosage is carefully controlled and increased gradually to achieve the right and effective contractions. Now, this method once again requires continuous monitoring to ensure that contractions are strong enough to progress the labor, but not so strong that they cause fetal distress or excessive pain also to the mother. Medical induction of labor is common and usually successful. But it is important to understand that while these methods are generally safe, they too also come with some risks. 
So the potential risks could be stronger and very frequent contractions, increased need for pain relief and a higher likelihood of requiring a cesarean section. Your doctor will monitor you and your baby closely throughout the induction process to manage any complications that may arise. So it's very, very crucial to discuss any concerns or any preferences with your doctor to make an informed decision. So thank you for watching today and I hope you found today's information helpful. It was a little technical, but I tried to simplify it with my diagrams. So I hope you understood that. Here is wishing you a safe and a healthy delivery and a very joyous motherhood. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this video with others who might benefit from it. And I'll see you soon.